Yeah. What's up, everybody? It's Lamont, and welcome back to the God is My Source podcast, where we bridge the gap between God, money, business, family, and relationships. I got Chris and Johnson on the line from Detroit, no. right? Yeah, Detroit. I'm from Joy Road, where oh, my okay. son is six <laughs> Hey, this is about to be a good episode. I got my friend here. She went to Central State University with me. Woman of God, kind-hearted. And we about to just get into this. So we're going to start off with- My boy. What you doing? I said, oh, I was like, you know, hyping my stuff. Okay, let me chill. I don't want to be too funny. (laughs) So we're going to start off with a word of prayer. We was already having a conversation. So we're going to continue into that. We're going to start off with a word of prayer. We're going to get right into it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We honor you and we praise you. We thank you for this conversation of great minds. We ask you to help us to touch someone's soul, helping them bring them to Christ, help bring someone who fell astray back to Christ. We ask you just to continue to guide us, lead us, show us the way, bind us to your will, bind our thoughts to your thoughts. We ask you to show us our purpose so that we can help others and we will be a blessing unto others. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this on the Shelby. Amen. Amen. So it is. So it is. Amen. So before we we had we was uh, we was talking we was catching up with each other but I was like we need to start recording because some of the stuff we was talking about like definitely need to be talked about like because we were talking about her testimony where she came from so talk to the people a little bit where are you from like what what you got going on what's your testimony um hi everyone I'm Kristen Johnson uh, I am from Detroit but I moved to Dallas when I was 11 so I literally consider myself a middle child of the United States like I've experienced both cultures Midwest and Southern um I am 25 years old I currently live in Fort Worth Texas I got my degree in business management and administration but I am a teacher and educator I teach sixth grade college and career readiness um, I am a sh- avid believer of Christ. I got saved when I was six years old at a very uh, trying time, which was crazy because I was six, but a very trying time in my life. Um, I got saved and I have just been trying to walk and live, I guess, this life since. Um I want you to ask me a question, Lamont, because I don't really know what else to say or what you want me oh, to you say. Good. You just got, they, they just want to know who you is, what you come from, what's your testimony. You was talking about a lot earlier. One thing she had touched on, she was talking about like how she learned how to how to manage her finances because how old are, how old are you? You know, my yeah, women like, you know, women don't like to act. You ask no, their age, fine. you know, you young. So she's 25. You feel me? So she in that transitional stage where she graduated from college had a corporate job, and then she transitioned to what she wanted to do, actually, because what people don't usually know is, is that, this is my analogy, this is a Lamont analogy. I done been through a lot. I done talked to a lot of different people. So when you coming up, about 18, 19 years old, you just want to just do whatever you think everybody else is doing. So that's what you think you want to do, whether it's college, whether it's get money. That's why it changed. Like a lot of people think that people are not going to college no more, but what's really happening is, is that a lot of people think that you don't have to go to college. Because when I was coming up, we thought that you had to go to college or you was going to be a bum. Like it wasn't even no in between. It was no, like people was thinking about entrepreneurship, but like a lot of people that were entrepreneurs, they just like hustle for real. Like it was your local dope dealer who had a couple businesses or whatever like that. Not too many, they didn't steer us towards entrepreneurship, which they should have. But then we, you get about like 21, 22, you start to find yourself a little bit, but you are caught up. You, you're not caught up in the world, but you usually trying to like find out who you are, what you supposed to be doing, what you want to do, what you like. You start to find out what you like. Then you start to get around 25. You start to understand, I'm not here for no reason. What am I supposed to do? What do I like to do? What I thought I wanted to do is probably not what I wanted to do. And you move forward. Then once you get to about 26, 27, 28 era, it's when you start settling in what you think you want to do. But either you haven't got there yet or you done it. So now it's either you're going to push for your dreams or you going to push for, let me make sure that I'm stable. And that's two different types of people at that point. And it's not, it's not bad either or, but 
what we see Kristen is she's in that 25 era. She learned how to manage her finances. She taking stuff seriously. We usually don't take stuff seriously when we like 19, 20, 21. Some people do, and those are the lucky. Well, I gonna, those are the people that are blessed. They got blessed with that mindset. So now she's transitioning into this 26, 27, 30 area, but she getting enlightened early. I know when yeah, I was- Watch your mouth, bro. <laughs> huh? I what? said, watch your mouth. That sounds crazy to hear, but yeah, I am. I'll be 26 in June. Wow. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry to cut no, you off. No, that's how it happened. Because when you turn 25, you're trying, to, you're trying to make something happen. But she was talking about balancing her finances, learning how to be a good steward. Somebody might need to hear this because God not going to give you what you can't manage. Absolutely. And she was saying, I hope I can manage what God got for me. And I was like, nah, you just got to make sure you know your purpose, understand what God created you to do. That way you don't spend your money on stuff that not going to get you to, to fulfilling your purpose. And I think that actually that's a good segue. Like, so now I feel like I have a begin point, but I just think that it's important that that principle goes with like everything in life. Like, what you pour into it is what you're going to get back or being a steward, what you, when it comes to, you know, mind, body, spirit, which is God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, for real society, the world just, you know, culture just shifted it, but that's what that is. You have to focus on stewarding, not just over your finances, but over yourself, over your time over. And that's where I am. And I grew up in the church. Um, Koji, Church of God in Christ. So very, very Koji. like, yeah, the the song speaking in class, tongues, everything. Speaking in tongues, <laughs> uh, demonic, you know, seeing demonic, what would be considered an exorcism, like not to scare any believers, but this this faith walk is very real. But I was exposed to a lot of that very young. And I mean, I remember being six and there are bishops now, I won't name drop anybody because I don't think that's relevant, but like very prominent people in the church that kind of like appointed me or not appointed me, but called me young or just knew, you know, like I grew up in the church hearing from a lot of people on a lot of levels, like there's a calling on your life, like you call. And I mean, from six years old, like all throughout teenage years. And as a kid, it was cute. You know, they like, oh, you call, sing the song, sing the scripture. Like, I remember um, Bishop Shear, let me call him out, actually. We're going to leave some of this in 2022, because I mean, 2021, because he just passed away. So let me give people their flowers. But it was like certain people, uh, Elder Edwards, that used to like make me read. I'm six and seven years old. And they used to just pick like random passages of the Bible or what they would be using in church or in the, the sermon that day and just have me get up and read. And I remember he would... They would just be like, you know, she could read this girl. This girl can speak. She can talk. And that's always been my gift is my ability to speak, my ability to talk and my ability to use my words. And I say a gift because God gives gifts without repentance, without anything. I could. It's so much I can do with this gift. Like and I'll get into how I'm wrestling now, like and just being. But it scared me like as a kid, it was cute, you know, but nobody really taught me what that meant. Nobody really set me aside. Even my teenage years, like um, I, I was very, I would say I kind of lived a, a pure life. Like I was exposed to a lot of trauma. I was, you know, a victim of sexual abuse as a child, um, different things, not, not details, but I would say God really kept me and he kept my mind. He kept me he gave me discipline, you know, to protect my body. And so when I did get to teenage age, which now is so crazy, the church make it seem like, you know, you get 16, 17, 15, it's odd for you to have sexual energy or, you know, be evolving in that way. And that typically is the first sin to lead a young person, in my opinion, from Christ. Like that's the black eye sin, either for our generation, it was either homosexuality or your sexual, well, it, sexuality in general you know, was like the first ones that in our age bracket that we just saw that the church was really failing at, you know, teaching us. And I felt being called. So when what happened was I did, I made a mistake, not a mistake. I lived. I, I, and when I made that mistake, the church kind of made me feel that 
everything God had placed on the inside of me was gone. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that's not gone, but like my calling was gone. Like I got sat down, like, cause I was 15, 14, 13, speaking at women's conferences and national conventions. And it was, it was very grand. So I will say I've always lived a life of letting God use me. I don't take credit for any of that. Now I know it's all a part of his puzzle, but like just going through that and experiencing that, it had me like, uh, and I never quite like from probably 17 to when I would say probably like eight, 17, when I graduated high school, all the way up until I was 23, my walk with Christ was very what I wanted it to be. And my grandfather is a pastor. So that's on my mom's side, right? So in Detroit, Ohio, my dad and my grandfather are both pastors. My grandmother, also an amazing woman of God. Like I'm talking Bible study, Sunday school. So I know the word. I know the Bible, not just called taught. You hear me? Like I have a strong foundation that I'm grateful for now, but that's what the devil started to attack when I went to college. And when, you know, I was out of the umbrella, I feel like of, the safety net of like everything that I knew. And, you know, the first thing that I found that he took away that I see a lot of people in our generation kind of spiraling with is he took Jesus from me, which was strange. Like, like he comes for our relationship with Jesus in our generation intensely. And mine was more of a intellectual rabbit hole, right? Like all of these, were well, was it real? And this was when I was 19, 20, um, but God still had his hand on me. One thing, I never turned my back on God. I never stopped praying. I just, the way I started to deal with things just started to drift further and further from what I knew to be the right way or not even what I knew to be the right way because what I felt like I learned was wrong in a lot of instances or it wasn't, it wasn't all the way correct. So God just kind of had me on this potter's wheel. And I feel like I actually did... I don't know when it happened, but at some point I made a decision and I started choosing whatever I wanted to do. Like, and being talented, being gifted, it left me tired. It left me feeling like my work was unseen, unheard, um, stretched. And, you know, for a lot of people that know me, that might be like odd to hear, but I was succeeding, but I had no joy. Um, I was succeeding in doing things that I know God wanted for me to, I know, I'm going to say, I know needed to be put into the world that God wanted put into the earth. So he was still using me, but I was still like in my normal day-to-day -day life, I was spiraling. I was struggling. Like I was dealing with, you know, all of these feelings and trauma just that had got left on me from childhood that I felt was left on me that now because I was out of this umbrella I started to reattach myself to things that God really had liberated me from already but the thing about like freedom in God is you don't really know you're free until you know you're free like you literally don't know you can go to the altar it's things I went to the altar as a teenager time and time about like daddy issues healing from sexual trauma family, all types of things. Like even when I was young that I struggled with at 16 and here I am 25, breaking those, finally breaking those chains. But it wasn't because God, it was me. And you know, God is a gentleman and people don't realize that like, he's not gonna force you to do anything like at all. He's gonna guide you. And hopefully, you know, we make decisions that honor him. And I think that's, I was in a, a, a state of like, making decisions that honoring God, but doing what I want to do, but honoring God, but doing what I want to do, but honoring God, but having sex, but honoring God, but playing men, but honoring God, but you know what I'm saying? Honoring God, but, but standing on the sofa is honoring God, but down in liquor. Like I was party girl, Chris, that is a, and you know, that is a, a stigma that I have had to pray myself out of that I never thought I traded. I always joke now, Bible girl, like that people used to say, I traded Bible girl for party girl. And now I got a, I don't want to be Bible girl or party girl. I just want to be Chris and who God purposed. So I'm going to slow up because I just talked a lot. No, nah, no, nah, you good. You just, you just touched a lot of good points because a lot of people, they, they honestly scared to like talk about this. And that's one reason why I started. Yeah, I'm scared. This is coming out of me. I'm scared. Like, I don't know if you see me, I'm kind of hesitating. I prayed 
this is a season two where I'm asking God to guard my mouth. Like I would show this to the people. My screen saver is literally whoever guards his mouth and tongues keeps his soul from troubles. So I am very, very adamant right now. Like let the words of my mouth be acceptable. So let me shut up right now. <laughs> no, nah, you good. Your, 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 your testimony, it, it brings people to Christ. It, it, it shifts atmospheres for people because what people look at as anointing, some people look at anointing as just being able to just like, like preach or, mm -hmm. or, or, or pray good or nah, the anointing is you, you being able to connect. Yes. You being able to actually shift and mm -hmm. come in. You like, it's some people that got so much power. They don't even understand. Like when they walk in the rooms, like everything shifts. Yeah, It's the ability to use your gifts boldly for Christ. Like, I think that yes. might be the most like, and I, that just came out of me naturally. Like I'm gonna have to rewatch this myself and take notes, but like, literally, like, I think that's what an anointing is. And that's how it should have been taught to us. That's how it should have been taught to me. All of these talents that I have, all of these gifts that the Lord has given me, let me use them for his uplifting, for his kingdom, for, for his purpose, like what he wants me to do. And it's, it's so important. Like, no, for real, because if you, if you look at the Bible, each and every character that's highlighted, they all had different gifts. They mm -hmm. all had different skills. I was reading the book of Daniel today and just looking at all the different stuff he did. Like mm -hmm. he was an administrator, but he was a dreamer, but he had visions, but he's able to speak to the people mm -hmm. and he wasn't scared of nothing. And he can pray his butt off. You feel me? So like, everybody's different. David, he was a strong warrior. Solomon mm -hmm. was good with his words. He was good with his mind. You had Abraham. He just was wise. Wise. Just wise for and no the reason. The thing is, people like, I love that you said that because so many people, they like, you know, like people that, let me get non-believers or those who are new in the walk, like, I don't want them to feel discouraged. Look at God giving me words. I don't want them to feel discouraged because David also was an adulterer and a very, very violent man. Like Saul, Saul that turned to Paul, like Abraham, Moses had a speech impediment. Like he had to go to Pharaoh stuttering, like l -l -l let my people go. Like, you know, when you know those parts of the Bible as well too, it, these are everyday people. And that's why you can start to identify when things are just worldly, like, women preachers, male, just certain things are just like divisive. Um, mm. I would say like, and when I say culture is coming for our, our, our Jesus, they're coming for our religion. Like everybody's like, I'm not religious. No, you are religious. If you believe in Jesus, if you believe that Jesus died Thank and you. rose and you did that as a kid and you have not been blasphemous, that's a bond that you made, honey. That is a commitment that we all have made. And if you have not made it, I pray that you get the opportunity to. But once you make that commitment, that's that's like a, a blood contract, baby. He's chasing after you forever. It's nothing that you can do. And that's why the devil wants us to lose our connection to Jesus because our generation specifically, we are spiritual. No, you're a Christian. Shut up. You got some church hurt. Like, and that's that's me. I feel like there's a large, large, large population of young people that are struggling in that area. And it, it's just, it. you need Jesus. Jesus is the source. Jesus is the access. Jesus, if you read the Bible and even understand historically, you know, and this might, oh, <laughs> coming for some of the pro-Black movements and some of those things, keep reading that Bible in historical context and you will see what really happened. There's a lack of accountability. And I don't want to go too deep because you got to really be researched to understand and I'm not even fully yet, you know, like that's something God to give me more revelation in time. But we were, we were chosen, but we failed. Read the whole Bible. Understand why we needed Jesus. Understand why he really is so important. It took away, he took away that mindset of, oh, I'm the one, but he still came from the bloodline. So it's like a lot of people, you really got to tap into that word for yourself and understand like, the like I found out this week for the first time, Mary was a teen mom. Like historically, fourteen to sixteen years old, no older. See, the I didn't world, age. Cu culture and I shout out to Transformation Church. 
culture though will like kind of teach us that they immediately hear that and be like oh god no 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 14 16 i just told you that's the age that i had the most faith ever in god just about that's literally when the enemy attacked me and that's when you got so much belief and there's a purity that somebody 25 i couldn't have been married okay because <laughs> because my like you get what i'm saying it's like it makes so much sense and if you if we step back and give jesus a opportunity or just get the opportunity to meet the trinity that's what i feel like failed like i i knew god i knew of jesus but then it was like oh I, i'm just kind of believing in god i'm not no i'm i'm i am a christian but i do not rock with denominations Kojic, my my dad was back. My dad's side is Baptist. My mom, I grew up Kojic. It's it's all the same, and it's man made division. So that's what we need to like. Know what you say, like know what you saying. You believe. Know what you say. You stand in. Like, and if people start to talk it out, you will realize you what you saying don't really make a lot of sense because it's in you. Like once you make that vow. Like, I'm going to keep saying that it is in you and it is going to recklessly chase after you, like recklessly, recklessly. It's a seed. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a seed. Like the way Jesus described it, he said, you know, the, the, like a farmer throwing seeds. Some going to fall on the path, some going to fall on the rock, some going to fall on the thorns, some going to fall on the good ground. The ground is you. Ooh. The ground is you. The ground on the, the path is people that's not going to listen for real. The rocks is people that's going to listen, but they really don't believe it. It's like it feel good to them. Then you got the thorns is the people that's listening, but they thinking about how they going to get money, how they going to take care of their kids, how they going to eat tomorrow, how they going to get to their job, all that different stuff. And then that good ground is understanding that faith come by here and here and come by the word of God. If I know this word, nothing is going to shake me because no evil shall befall me. No plague shall come down my dwelling. The blessing of the Lord make me rich and have no sorrow. You understanding this word to the point that's in you. Mm -hmm. And even if you understand it, that don't mean he says some going to produce 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold. Mm -hmm. So then you even got to tap into a whole nother level of faith and being connected with the Literally. whole more to even be your best self. And it's crazy. Do you listen to Transformation Church? I do, but I'm. I don't I don't bounce around like I was at a church. I was listening to what they had to say. So like. I, li I listen to preachers as like, as I'm looking at basketball or yeah, something. And that's the answer that I was like trying to get because it just shows there's so much alignment in the kingdom right now. Cause I'm, I get, I have to say, I guess I'm a member, not guess I'm a member of TC nation. We've been watching since like 2017. <laughs> oh, he's sweet, though. Like, like he's no, sweet, I love though. him. Like I love him. I love bigger than him. I love the ministry. Like his ministry is what pulled me just the testimony I just said is what gave me hope again. But anyways, I say that because he just preached crazy faith and all of these churches are aligned right now. Like I say, ministries align with, you know, your level of expectation is going to set what God can do for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm learning now. Like I had such a lack mindset, not when it came to business, not when it came to Thurgood Marshall and all of that. I knew I could get in. That was playing it safe. And a lot of people don't know that. That was using my, I was going to, you know, I was going in there. That was easy money for me. Like I was not challenging my spirit. Well, my spirit was growing. I was being exposed. So I'm not going to say the season wasn't necessary because I know it planted seeds that's going to come into fruition. I'm going to sit with some of those CEOs and shake some of those hands again in a different reason. But I speak that over myself. But it's like, it was all easy. Now, SGA, that was difficult. And that was, people don't know this, that was something I did not want to do. My you didn't want to do that? My senior year, I didn't run. Well, my, I was a junior, actually. I did not run for a position. I was going to be the service learning senator again, but nobody ran. Nobody was running because people thought that I was going to run. But the real truth is, I did not put an application in. Dean Brown, and let me tell the whole story, Dean Brown and Kalea Harvey really, like, made me do that. Mm. Thank God, I would say. Like, that wasn't, and that was the, that's where I got put on the potter's reel for real as a leader. And using my voice, it started, but I look back even at that season, there was so much disobedience as well. Party Girl Chris was, 
was holding back some of what could have what could have came to Central. And I know, and I'm speaking on this season, I guess, because you 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 were around it, but I know that so much more could have came had I been anchored. But I don't beat myself up. But it's just like I taught, I hope to teach the ones younger than me that you got to be anchored in God, even with those types of positions. And I was anchored. We were anchored to a level. But at times we should have been praying together at meetings. We was taking shots together and, you know, things. And this is just very transparent things that could have changed, the, which the trajectory got changed. We worked to our level of expectation. But imagine if we would have got buckled in and somebody would have been a little more bold to say, you know what, what's happening on our on in this season is more of a, a God thing than a us thing. And so now I'm focused on whatever you give me next, Lord, because now it's Crowley Middle School. That's where I'm at. That's the new something. That's the new, that's the new creative space for me. Let me move how you want me to move. Let me think how you want me to think. Let me say, say, say what you want me to say. Because I also found like, and just that period of 20 to like 24, 23, right before graduation, I I, I got to see for myself how my areas I needed to still grow in had had held back. And let me tell you why, like senior year, uh, me, I had a conversation with the president and I'm not gonna go deep, nothing like where it was very transparent. Like, um, and you know, we just got to talk about a seat at the table and what that really means and how my independence, my hyper independence, at certain points in my life has retracted my seat at the table. And it completely, like, oh, I could just get it done. That completely diminishes the point of a seat at the table. But it was in that season that I kind of learned that and I took it and I tucked it. And then just like corporate was just draining. It was, I remember specifically actually I was in, um, and I'm going a, I'm to a tell the business if they want to come kill me, it's on video, but I was interviewing for a very, very top government agency. Um, you remember that when we was in yeah. D.C.? And I was apprehensive about it before I went the first day. And me, uh, Lamont, he was working for a company at the time that he had a cool job, y'all. They like flew him out. It was great. And he got to just come like be a part of Thurgood Marshall. And so we talked for like three hours. And I remember you specifically told me that I had to be mindful of like what type of opportunities that I kind of gave myself because they would try to use me like to destroy as well. And you know, honestly, to that extent was basically what you said. And, or, you know, it can be used negatively as well. And that just stuck with me so much. Like, throughout my whole senior year, like it got to the point there were companies, I'm like, ah, you started with slave money, I'm cool. Like I was so picky and I don't know who I thought I was, but now I can say for the first time I was God's child. So I wasn't attaching myself to anything that I felt didn't have a grounding that I could stand on. Like, I'm gonna stop there because that's the new revelation for me. This this is good for me right now. No, because I mean, we don't pay attention to that. Like that go back into the whole purpose conversation. Mm -hmm. because we get into a situation that we just doing stuff for money. You feel me? We doing stuff for money. We doing stuff because we thought this is what we wanted to do. We want. We don't want to disappoint nobody. We want to make sure that we do what we said we was going to do and all this different stuff. But God told us, Jeremiah 29, 11, I got plans not to harm you, plans to prosper you. You feel me? Plans to give you expected in. You feel me? He also tell us, like, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean on your own understanding, all your ways, acknowledge him, and he going to direct your path. Mm -hmm. Many plans in a man's heart, but it's Lord's purpose that's going to prevail. So now you forced to have to understand that your gifts and your talents was given to you for an assignment. Mm -hmm. Not your gifts and your talents was given to you for you to do that. Because you got some people, they might be good at hoping. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Six, nine, dunking everywhere. But his purpose is to draw a nation to do something or draw children to do something or make his teammates even do something. Like, I feel like even though 
I know Kyrie Irving say he's spiritual or whatever, but I mean, he, I think he'll get together. But once, I think once he made his stand, I think he probably understood at that point in time that I'm here for a different, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not absolutely. I hope that when he became the, the, what is he, the president of the little union? You know, Kyrie Irving, you right. A lot of underlying change. That's how you know when it's God. God don't make big headlines. He do it. I mean, he do when he want to do it. Don't get me wrong. Not to say that, but the thing, like when it's God works in the dark and then put it out in the light when nobody else is ready. Like that development room, that dark room, like that's that's where I feel like Kyrie Irving, like you said, that's where he was. Like, and, and whatever, you could say spiritual, you could say whatever, God is God. God is God. And I hope and pray more people start to believe back in Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But we can have a whole podcast just destroying the historical timeline of all religions if you wanted to do that intellectually. But I wouldn't do that because that's not what Jesus would do. I just got to love you and, and show the light. Like That's what it's about. That's all. It, that's honestly what it's about, period. Like he said, when it was like, the Pharisees came to him was like, so what's the what's the most important law of Moses? He said, love your, he said, love. don't God, like, make sure that you don't put nothing before God and love your neighbor like you love yourself. He didn't say nothing about sex. The greatest commandment of all. all. He it's said, love, right. But when you love, all the other stuff just happens. And it starts with loving yourself, which is another great segue. Like, that's where I am. I'm learning to love myself. God taught me how to love everybody else but me, I guess, to this age. And I don't, I'm, I'm learning now the importance of loving myself and self-love has, and I have brought easily like sexual restraint, like things that, that I just didn't think, like, I don't want to go out. I don't want to drink. No, I'm cool. Like, no, like just certain things that are behaviors that fall off. And it's not to say like, oh, the walk is better. It's just where I am right now requires more. And yeah, I could, I could, I could compromise, but at what expense? It's like I'm a financial analysis of my own stock right now. So mm. I have to understand <laughs> the revenue, all of that. What, what's going into it? What is it going to cost me to do this? Yeah, I might get drunk. I could get drunk, but that's that might take me or I might, you know, go out and party. That might take me back two weeks in God's presence where now I got to fast for two weeks and I, I don't got that type of time right now. Dang, this, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't want to have to keep going in a cycle. Like, and I think that's what's kind of really forcing me. And this is coming so transparently, like that's what's forcing me to just keep going. Cause it's like, I know what it's like to get drunk again. I know what it's like to have a, a phone full of dudes again. I know, I know what it's like to be lusted after. I know what all of that is like. What does it feel to lust after myself? Not even love myself. Like, I don't want to be happy. I want joy. Like, and, and that's another thing. Earlier, I wanted to say that, like, everybody want to be happy. Why? It's an emotion. It fades like this. Like, mm -hmm. literally, like, I tell my students all the time, emotions stay in our body three minutes. Anything longer is you keeping it there. So, which means another revelation. I never talked it like this. Even with happiness, you forcing your happiness after three minutes, scientifically. No, you are. You forcing it. You forcing it. Because joy, like, and that could be even what, what people say different. Like, I, I got the joy of the Lord. It's, it's different. Like, and I had to fight for it. It got developed in the dark room. It got developed through depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts. Like me knowing that when I felt like nobody else in this world was fighting for me, God was in my ear fighting for me. Like those type and and those are seasons that it's gonna take time to be super transparent about. Like you know, like I'm a very transparent person, but. Cause I just want to make sure that I'm speaking them correctly and that people don't take what they want to take from what I say. They take what God wants them to get from what I say. Like, and that's why I'm really working on just using my words for what he wants me to say. That's it. Amen. That's it. <laughs> nah, you, 
you just you just hit some for real because like we was talking about that a little bit earlier too. We was talking about like a lot of people choose you. It's like a choice between happiness and obedience. Yes, yes. And a lot of people they choose happiness. I mean, me and myself included. Sometimes I choose happiness, but that happiness not necessarily obedience. But once you pay attention to once you choose obedience over happiness then you will start moving in the will of God for your life. Mm -hmm. And then whatever God has for you, you will be happy because you was doing what God called you to do. It's just going to naturally happen. You might not get everything you thought you wanted. You might not get the rose. You might not get the the, the mansion in uh, Beverly Hills, but whatever you have, you'll be happy with that because you know this is what you were purposed to have. This is what your assignment was. This is what you are called to do versus trying to force that happiness like you said trying to force being in a situation that's why people drink so much that's why people smoke all the time that's why people always want to go out that's why people all because they trying to force an emotion and And that's what i i had to pray off myself like to be honest this past year i've spent more time by myself than i ever have in my life and i kind of always been a College was the first time in my life that I was not a loner. Mm. Like, not a loner, but, like, I've always been social, but, like, the first time, and I still was, like, different, but it was the first time where I just opened up all of these social circles, and now I see why God was keeping me, like, why it's important to also know isolation so you can learn yourself. Like, I've been in this room, like, no, I don't want to go out. And of course I have my moments. Like I still, I do, I go out at times, but I realize the importance of not the anti-drift is what they call it. Like it comes at, it costs too much. And I realize, dang, I'm just finna drink cause I'm sad. Or I'm really just finna drink because, or I'm finna text this person cause I got this boy or no, I don't want your energy and I don't want to give you mine. That's something I'm learning too. Like, so everybody talk about, oh, you know, Having premarital sex, you get all of these energies and da 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 da. What about what you giving people? Because I know what I've been through in life. I know who I lay with in life. I got to keep cleansing myself. So when I do come up on who God has for me, that they, oh, they not getting all what I got either. And that's something that that just came out like that at 25. Because I think women do that a lot. And not to be, don't, don't attack me, ladies. Like, I love y'all. I am feminist to the core. I love women, you but feminist, your words got power. Huh? You're not feminist, your words got power. What do you mean? Feminist is just literally the social, economical, and political uh, equality of the sexes. Now, what the world has taken at the root, I had to teach my kids that. That's all that means. That's what it means to be a feminist. All that other stuff you write. I hope that's what it means because they oh, be Lord. tripping. Oh Lord! What you was about to say? Oh Lord, but no, I don't run around like oh, but it's okay. I, I, I that's what the word means. Now, unfortunately, the world just like the rainbow, something something very imagery that has been manipulated. But anyways, um, I just I forgot what I was gonna say. I did not think I was gonna get concussion brain during this podcast, but I just did. Um, uh, talking about you said uh, that uh, you said a lot of women. They don't, you basically, I think you was going into the realm of a lot of women don't pay attention to what they give off. They just talk about what they receive. Yeah. And then I, I think I forgot because I got to be careful. Let me see me. Yeah. I was Let not paying Because <laughs> I don't think some people are ready to hear that. I talk about that a lot, but I'm me mad. Too, no, no, it's everybody. It's everybody. But I just know, specific, not what they give off, but like, it's like, we do have a sacred place in society. So act like it. Both sides. That's good though. That's that's true. And that's and that's what I'm saying with me. Like I'm thinking like, oh yeah, I'm coming and I'm bring. I'm definitely bringing light to somebody I date. Life like all of those. But if I ain't dealt with all of my sexual trauma and all of my, I'm I'm spilling that onto them. And we're in the bed and we're. I don't want to do that. So let me be very clear about what I'm talking about. Like I I don't want to spill onto anybody anymore. I don't want to. No, like it, and I don't want nobody doing it to me either. Okay, like it, it, you have to understand how serious something like that is now. Like, and I've always kind of been able to go into. I used to say now I feel like they were performative 
celibacy routes like oh yeah I'm not having sex really more so was motivated by it would be motivated by like oh you pissed me off we really just not gonna have sex again for four months naturally so I'm gonna just say I'm celibate but my mind at any moment it can go down but like now at 25 it's like oh clink clink like what the t- like no like leave me alone and that's how I am about everything like And I'm learning to, well, that's how I'm learning to be about everything. And the most important right now, I'm learning how to steward my my spirit, my energy. I have to protect myself in a way that until you evolve into this positioning, you're not going to understand why you have to protect yourself at that level because people will use you. But you ain't, and you could be used by God and used by people all at the same time. That's what I'm learning. Mm-hmm. And that's why you have to trust your spirit, trust the spirit when it's telling you to back up from things. Because a lot of times we prolong assignments, we prolong being in people's lives. And then that's what ends us in pain. And I'm I'm speaking very directly at myself in the situation that's passing me. Like, amen, it's going to keep passing. Like, I don't I don't want to carry heartbreak anymore. Like, it, what, what, what broke in me? I was already broken. So <laughs> what, like, I mean, I'm I'm getting healed. I'm healing, so, but you can't break anything in me. Like you can't, like you can't, I don't know. And that's just something I've been really finding joy in too. Like knowing that just with all things, energy, protected, protected, protected. Cause that's what the devil is after. The devil after your mind. Mm-hmm. Everything starts in the mind. Everything starts as a thought. And then once you speak it, it has ability to come into existence. And that's why, too, let me. Because our generation, we will say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like even like, for, for example, I, I found out some news and I, I, I am very like, I know my words are. I was I was saying stuff that I know one day I'm going to have to sit before Jesus because that's what the Bible say. And when he pulled that one out the hat, I'm going to be like. That's what you oh. said. <laughs> but, and that's what the enemy wants us to do because it, it speaks, it, you get caught in your emotions. You get caught in your emotions and you start to speak things into the world. And like, even what was new though, I hadn't even really, I hadn't had a neck because venting is not of God, another conversation. Mm. But I hadn't really had a vent session in a while anyways, just naturally. Like that was like this negative version of venting. Now getting things out, but just this, this I had, and then as I'm doing it, I'm like, Lord, forgive me. I know I should, I'm like, whoa. Well, I, I never been calling somebody a FN and mad, you know what I'm saying? But God, I'm sorry, I'm talking like this. And it's, this p word a b and i'm like god please help like i don't want to be i don't want to be like this and that's when he started to really deal with me like watch your mouth bro like or me i'm the bro watch your mouth girl like watch what watch what you say watch what you watch what you put into this world because it's powerful and you'll be surprised you don't want to start to see the things that you say happen everything because everything that you say does happen in the time it's going, everything that we put into this earth at some moment, unless God, but we have grace and mercy, thank God, right? But imagine that, like everything I said in the world, just, like, you know, I mean, people, you know, I, mean, I can't even say it, it's embarrassing. Them dark thoughts, like that, we got to stop saying anything. I got to stop saying anything. That's why my screensaver is that, let the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. And that scripture is, Proverbs 21 and 23, which is the ages I feel like you're the most reckless with your mouth anyways. 21 and 23. Hey, you just hit something. <laughs> hey, that's real though. It's like death and life is in the power of the tongue. And we just use our words so loosely. Like even when it comes to sickness and disease, like with this cold COVID thing, you, I ain't going, I'm not, I'm not getting that vaccine. I mean, they're gonna have to shoot me up like they self. And I I'm been good. Even when the Omarion, when they Omarion, everybody out here is scared. I'm not speaking that into my life. Yeah, I don't, facts. Like I'm not speaking that. Like I'm not going around and saying, like, now and, and it's nothing against nobody who wanna go do whatever, go get the vaccine, wear the mask, hand sanitizer a million times. 
you, but I feel like you're having faith in getting it when you do that. Faith come by hearing. So when I hear it, I might got to shut it down because if I believe it, it can happen. And I don't want to believe that it can happen. So I feel like even what you saying kind of divisive, divisive. The, it don't let people do what they want to do. Yeah. Like, I, I'm vaccinated. I'm, 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 I am partially vaccinated, but I am an educator. I work with kids. We were getting high numbers. It wasn't a decision. It honestly was a decision that God told me to do. I was sitting like, and it, it, it all worked out. And I'm like, okay, God, fine. Like, you know, like, okay, this is confirmation. So you just got to be obedient to what the Lord tells you to do and what he tells you not to do and not yeah. be peeking in the next person. Yeah, what person not doing. yeah, or trying to say like a vaccination is the, we're using a vaccination as a determinant of someone's faith. Let's like at the root. And I, I'm not trying to like check you or nothing. Like, that's just how that sounds to me. Like, no, that's divisive. That's not of God. God does. God doesn't deal with us like that. But your faith talk that everything a hundred. I that that is a hundred. That's what God told you. That's what God has revealed to you right now. Like that is your faith talk. Like and that's powerful. And for some people, it's for them. You know what I'm saying? But let's just like I just pray as a body, we can not let things like that just be divisive because. Oh, yeah. I mean, even though it is faith, but it just it's not a situation of I downgrade someone because at the end of the day, it is what it is. Like, like if somebody don't they scared of something, they just scared of something like that's something that God got to deal with them with. Like mm -hmm. Daniel went to the lion's den. Who knows if he would have told somebody else going to lion's den if they would have came. Right. Out. Exactly. It's the level of faith that you have. And that's why I know, like, even the level that I am with that, like, that took faith for me because I was very much, I am a historian, Tuskegee, like very much, like no way, but I have been kept. I'm talking attacks, people. I think they gave me. most of y'all water anyway. I have been, I have been, I have been exposed over 10 times. Like, and I, I, I've been in, thank, I thank God that I've made it through this pandemic. Um, I made it through this pandemic without catching COVID at all. And I'm not going to give credit to nobody for that, but God and obedience. You also have to, that again comes with stewarding over yourself, like over yourself. I also don't go out no more. It's certain things like, you know, my expo, that's why when I did decide, it's like, okay, the kids. And then I had to make a decision of, okay, their number is not high. So if I do decide to step out on a weekend, why would I want to come back? And you know what I'm saying? It's God like, please. these is my kids. Like, you know, like, so it, it, it's, it's very, I feel it's very layered. And we have to pray as a body on how to just respect, understand, and move on. Like, that's faith. Faith. That's the faith. Like, faith on both sides. Like, I don't know. It's it's difficult though, but I get what you're saying too though, because I do know a lot of Christians actually that are living more fear based, like even vaccinated fear based. That might be why you catch it fear based because you fear based, you fear based, you fear based, you still fear based. You're like so I get. I don't want to like make it seem like I stump your point because it's a absolutely a hundred too. Like that's just how I, how I feel about it. That's my revelation on it. I mean. I'm not down nobody who do whatever. I mean, some people they gotta do it for their jobs or whatever. That's that's what they do. I'm just not putting myself in that position because I feel like he was wounded for my transgression. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I die from it or get it and die from it, that's what was supposed to happen to Lamont. Mm -hmm. Like that was supposed to happen. And I canceled the assignment of the enemy now to try to send it. But that's just how I feel about it though. But I think this was a time that we could have literally stumped on the enemy's neck though. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like when they was closing the churches, like the church I went to in North Carolina, we ain't closed. Like it was still open. Like they closed our location, but we was like traveling to Jacksonville back and forth to go. You feel me? But we having like full church. Like this is a whole Pentecostal church. So it's like, you already know what time it is. Like mm -hmm. it's full church, no masks, no nothing. Nobody caught the COVID. Nobody died. 
we had a convocation with over a thousand people in the location in Charlotte. When we finally came back together. Nobody caught it. Everybody believed. And that was that. Now that was maybe just for was for us. But I feel like if the whole country, the whole world would have took that approach, just imagine people got full blown COVID coming in, get hands laid on, they come out, they nothing wrong. Yeah, thanks. I it's just with everything. It ain't no, it ain't no governmental nothing. Everybody's just gonna believe God. I believe and I definitely like that was a, a great experience to have. I'm sure like it probably built so many people's faith in a whole new way, just the being able to meet like that. But also, like, on the other hand, I know a whole generation that got wiped out in Detroit, yeah. Pentecostal, because they was meeting. So, like I said, God is moving, but it might have, let me not say that. Thank you, Lord. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But certain certain shifts have needed to happen. And God is also moving through this pandemic. He's taking people he wants to take, like, period. And, like, for you to say that, like, he was like, I'm young, if I get it. For me, that was like, like nails on chalkboard and not even like forced, like not even as a vaccine conversation, like I already stated my opinion with that. Everybody should do what they want, but like what God tells them. But like, I just lost my cousin who was 33, 30, 32, 30, like not even 34 yet to COVID. Like no, had a baby on the way, a wife. I mean, his baby was mm. born within two weeks after we buried him. So, like, I just very much have to say that's why you, but also my cousin's life, like you said, I, it might have been his time. It was his time. Not might have been, it was his time. And that's something we have to learn to accept. But I also know it's some COVID deaths too from people and a lack of listening to God. They're going to the club. <laughs> and not even just that, like, I'm, I'm small. People wouldn't think I'm young. I'm not at risk, but I have, I can, I get severe breathing issues, certain points. Thank God. This is the first year of my life, two years that I have not dealt with severe, mm. like breathing issues or anything like that in the, in the, this season. So something like COVID could have really knocked me out the game. So that's what I'm saying. You got to have that revelation with God, whether it's COVID, the flu, the person you're dating, how you gonna spend your money. Like you gotta have that connection so he could tell you what to do to protect you. And he's gonna look for that obedience. Mm -hmm. Like, period. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what the Bible say. Like, that's that's why when, what's his name? Uh, dragged his son up thinking he was gonna have to kill him. I'm terrible with names. Um, Sarah's what? son, Isaac. Isaac was the son. Yeah, but his son stayed up. He was speaking it, though. This is something a new revelation. As he walked him up the thing, like, oh, me and Isaac going up. We're going to come back, though. Speaking it through the death season, as I'm dragging you to the sacrificial pit, I'm still speaking life. But he also understood that I might have to sacrifice you. And that's what I think COVID is teaching a lot of people. Like, I was so angry after my cousin passed because... It was like, God, both cousins, this is on my dad's side and my mom's side at this point. I, both my oldest cousins have passed away to COVID, under 34, like with kids on the way, literally. And it's just like, I was angry. I mean, like, not I won't even say angry. I was enraged. Like when I found out, I literally, like, I was glad my friend Slim was here. Shout out, she from Cleveland. Shout out to Cleveland. She was here actually, but I like envisioned myself tearing my whole room up the whole thing, like, to the point that I've changed the whole room around. It's not the same room anymore. It doesn't look the same way it looked when I had that moment. And that's what people got to know too, like, but, so that's why we just have to be mindful and so careful because your revelation might be my wound right now. My wound might be your revelation, like in all things. And that's what I think God is just teaching us or Jesus is to be gentle, like in love, like you said, because, that experience y'all had, amazing. That was of God. You know what I'm saying? Even what was going on in Detroit with all the death, still of God. Still of God. If we truly believe him to be the, if we truly believe like the devil cannot take you off this planet without God's permission, that's God giving you choice. Mm -hmm. You choice. Do you want to live sometimes? 
Like when you, when we constantly make some decisions and sometimes he snatched people, I think, cause he don't want to keep seeing his kids spiral. He don't, he don't want to, he don't, they say a life cut short, something, not a life cut short. Sometimes I don't know. And that's a whole nother nugget of grief. I think that, and I'm not putting this on your cousins or nothing, but I think another reason why go back to that purpose conversation, like, you going to do what God called you to do. And when it's done or it's the next person turn or it's the, you're supposed to get a baton, that's going to happen. Exactly. Type deal. And I think once we get rid of that fear of death, Miles Monroe used to say that when a person starts fulfilling their purpose, they don't fear death anymore. Yeah. Because they know that they're doing what God called them to do and whatever happens, it was supposed to happen. I think a lot of people fear death because they either know they're not doing what they're supposed to do, scared that they haven't done what they thought they're supposed to do yet because they think that what they want to do is what they're supposed to be doing or they just, they ain't got their soul right. They don't know what's on the other side. So they like, Mm -hmm. I don't know yet because I, I, it's funny because everybody got their religion or whatever but I guarantee you this and people can tell me what they want the only people that can tell me probably different is people who suicide bombers when you on that deathbed you're going to debate if Jesus is real or not Thanks. because you don't want to wake up and you see darkness and at the end of the day that's what all of this comes to. Solomon said everything in life is vanity. Like all the stuff we searching for, every stuff we doing is vanity. To, I mean, yeah, yeah you want to live a legacy. Yeah, you want to have generational wealth. Yeah, you want to leave your kids something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to be remembered while you're here. But you can't want that more than you want Christ. Because if you want that more than you want Christ, you yeah, chose everything. mammon. Or are you going, exactly. I'm glad you said mammon. Because that, you know what I had to check my cell phone and I don't even want to do it. Like, I was reading the Bible. I can't tell you where I have to I have to look at my highlights because I just be reading. But it was like you 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 do mammon's hands with your symbols. And the symbol of party girl Chris was this, the turn up. People, you got and that's things I learned about as a kid. Like that was my little dance. Like, what? Like that's a revelation there. Like all of us, we'd be like, no, that is a direct it's and it's symbolism and yeah it's small but symbols it's a seed that you're putting into this world that might fall on somebody that had good soil but now they 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 like what i that's why i do now because i know it might be people that's looking up to me guy and i don't want me to normalize something that's not of you through my walk and have them taint it based on what I'm showing. And that's a, that's a higher level. People don't want that type of accountability over others. People don't want that. But that's what it means to be a shepherd of men. Like to be literally, to be a disciple of Christ. Like you're choosing people over everything. You're true. And it, we live in such a generation. I hate people. I had to stop myself from saying that because that's something the enemy had me saying though. Like, but I did go through a season. I hated people, but I'm not here to love people. I'm here to love spirits. I got to see people outside of their flesh, outside of their body. And when Man. you start to see that, you see light and not everybody. <laughs> but in a, <laughs> uh, that's just real. But in a great majority of, you know, people, you, you see them. Like I see and you just once you see people. It make life way more easy. Now, I'm glad you just said that because the Bible tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the whole scripture so people can understand. Ephesians 6. That's good. I like that you like 
like you I know the Bible because it, it comes out when I talk like the stories the names like but you know the Bible like I just pray my my memory keep growing so I could be like yeah Psalms 23 and I just like knowing it in my head that's dope I want to get to a point to that uh, doing that to be honest with you because the church I came I was at that man of God know the Bible front to back. I was like, how you know it like that? Like he—that's my preaching. grandfather, bro. It's, it's amazing. He'd be preaching, and then he'd just be like, "It said in such and such." Matter of fact, go to such and such such. No, it ain't there. Go to go to such and such such. A, yeah, it's right there. And then my grandfather, like what I love that I learned from him, because he studied the Bible and even in different languages. So that's another thing too, like walking when you learn the language and the origin it sometimes changes what was said or how it can be interpreted or what it actually meant so I love like when you do that and if there's a word I'm confused about I always look it up or I'll ask you know or but that's just a skill that you know like knowing the bible king james version and hebrew like come on let's do this like but that's how we got to be like that about knowing God's word, because if you know the word, can't nobody fool you. Can't nobody no. fool you. The enemy can't fool you. And you know what you got. Mm -hmm. It's a tool. And I said that in college, uh, the the people used to come from Cedar Cedarville. And like, I, oh, I remember we had one conversation. I still stand on everything I said. I was just saying, like, you know, y'all religion is blocking y'all message 100%. A lot of the way that that's ran is very old school. It's very contemporary. It's very, you know, like, not like that. But they just were like, I don't, you know, like, they were in awe of me. And I was in awe. I didn't know either. But that was the revelation as I was in that point. But their conversation is what made me like, mm, maybe we just a little church hurt. Because I say I, I don't believe in Jesus. But, ooh, I just went to bat for him in a different way. That wasn't, you know, because y'all want Jesus to be, this tough guy and this this oh do his guy he wasn't he was like he really was just like bro seriously like that's even the way he communicated he used to blow down though oh god that's what i was gonna say though that's how i know like yeah it can be in your little bit, it it away. <laughs> no he was very like almost like a sarcastic character like are you serious like I feel like Jesus had a dry sense of humor. Like he used to always be like bro in him, like not even on purpose, just like, bro, I just told y'all, if y'all believe it's going to happen, move to the side and let me show you what I just told you, even happened. though I just told you. And then the whole time he doing it, he like, I just told y'all this, but since y'all have such little, I mean, going, you right. Oh, you little faith. <laughs> going, going in, but he go in with like a gentleness still. Also something that's funny in the Bible, when and I just think I don't know maybe it's a team mom or somebody that's gonna listen that needs to find restoration in their story like I just can't leave that Mary alone and you know um there was a time who, who you brought into this world and even me like my parents were not in a relationship they didn't really know each other like but who you bring into this world can be important and what you call that child is important and what you raise that child in is very important like and I just think about how we do need the structure of our parents or just the structure in general because we can like being called young for instance like I know that was Jesus of course he came into this world called like he came into this world with a purpose but there's a story in the bible where we don't see Jesus from the time he was 12 till he was 30 because he was in the temple and people did finally start to believe, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, this is probably the son of God. Look how this boy can read. Look at the stuff this boy can do. Like, da 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 And his mama came, like, Jesus, what you doing? I told you to do something. And he like, woman, don't you see I'm doing God's work? We don't see him again for 33 years, bro. Like- He was in process mode. He was in process. Okay, God, like, no, you know what, creation? God and mom, mom and dad snatched him back. And we don't know. And I remember, because um, there's really like esoteric flirting around that's supposed to be like the lost years of Jesus. I'm not really into that because, you know, I feel like everything that's in the Bible is in the Bible, what God wanted to include. So anything else is like, that's God's trade secret. That like, as parents, they had this, 
And it's like, God is our father as well. So I don't want people to think just like natural. He gonna snatch you out sometimes in some seasons you might be gone from 13 to 30. And then you might come and do three great years and die because that's your purpose. Like my cousin, I think uh, he wrote a book. He wrote a great, great book, great, left so much art, right? Like, I know you live the purpose filled life of Christ, like, but it just, I think, like, that's why we have to be snatched back sometimes. Like, that's why I'm stowing my words, because in moments of progress, you need God to snatch you out the temple like they did Jesus, because you don't want to misspeak, mismove move quicker than the pace of the father like imagine if jesus would have got some type of worldly mentor or somebody who who envied his gift or envied who he was like you could have been running from death your whole life when you got to you know experience your years in peace and solitude and i'm speaking to myself i don't think we give enough praise to that season of being snatched out either because that's what my accident did for me it snatched me out coming to Texas, snatch me out of that environment even more. Just snatch me, snatch me, snatch me, snatch me. When I was tripping, okay? Me. Like, I was tripping. It was me. You can't, I don't know. No, you 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 touching it, like, to the full extent. That's why we, the process is going, like, we don't pay attention to, like, a sort of seed. You got mm -hmm. seed time, you got harvest. That's the law. You got seed time to harvest. For something to be a tree, an oak tree, it got to be a seed first, but it has to have time to grow. And that's the process. They got they, what they call it, photosynthesis, mm -hmm. like that. And during that process, you're going to change. You're going to form into different things like a butterfly. That's why we can't judge people by, by their flesh because they mm -hmm. might be this today and something else tomorrow, but you judge them by the spirit. That's why you got to know people by the spirit. We are a spirit that live inside of a body that possess a soul. And it bring me back to even like what I was talking about earlier. Uh, Paul said Ephesians, I finally found it was Ephesians 6 and 12. When he was telling them for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Like he was telling them to put on the whole armor of God mm -hmm. in this scripture. Like he told, I want to even read it. He said, so I'm going to start at 10. Finally, my brother and the strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand the, against the wheels of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of the of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness mm -hmm. in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having grid of your wrist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having stood forth your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fury darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of the salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god mm -hmm. so now you just said it earlier it's a weapon mm -hmm. i praise my my word me knowing this bible is a weapon like when stuff come up like you got to use it like i even so I read the Bible for the first time front to back 2020. This was before pandemic. I didn't even know a pandemic was going to happen. I just knew I had to draw myself back from my flesh. Oh, no facts. Like I was tripping. I knew I was tripping. Like 2019, like I had made the most money I had ever made in my life, but I just felt a whole void. I was tripping. Like I was pursuing, like doing all this different stuff. And I was just unhappy that it wasn't working out. But I was like, nah, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing though. So I drew myself back, read that Bible from front to back. But 2021 was a whole test because it was like read it and now I read it again. So I don't read it two times. So you know the word of God. So now you better use this to fight your battles. Fly it, yeah. Using everything else to fight your battles. Because if you don't use this, you're going to lose the battle because you understand what's going on now. You understand that this not a, a fleshly battle. So if you... You run and cut somebody out because they pissed you off. That's not going to help. Like, because you just know that you just opened up a door to something else or you just. Exactly. And it comes with consequence. Everything. That's I just... think that's what people fail to realize with seeing. Like, seeing is seeing. But the wages of seeing is death, which and means people, you seeing. And people just, 
they, they, they taught it to us in a scary way, death, meaning, oh, you're, that don't just mean, like, death, meaning, like, oh, of like course, eventually, eventually, a life of sin will lead you to death. Any, that, that, a non-believer can point that out, a life of doing things that the Bible deem as sins will lead you to an early grave, even just naturally, like, believe what you, like, you smoke cigarettes that, every day, you go get lung cancer. But it's not just a, a worldly death, a flesh death that he was talking about. Yeah. Like your that's what I was saying earlier. You're exchanging all of these. It's not energies, it's demonic energies. Demonic, you're exchanging spirits, you're exchanging traumas, you're exchanging hurt and pain and all of these things like to sin. Like I'll be looking at Casamigos now, like, mm, is it worth it? Is it worth it when I know I'm gonna wake up at three o'clock in the morning dealing with feelings I don't deal with unless I drink this drink? Cause it's a spirit. Let's let's talk about it. Like, and I'm not, and I don't want any, I am not like I'm growing, I'm walking too. I'm not perfect. These are things that I know and that I try. I try my best. I am trying my best in this season to apply all of this knowledge that has always been accessible to me. But like I remember learning that as a kid, but maybe if they didn't teach it fear-based and didn't teach me that, oh, drink, because... Understand what... The, what I, really I can understand the consequence, but the church didn't want to talk about consequences because talking about consequences comes with a level of transparency. You got to talk about what you're doing. You got to talk that. about what you've been through. Like me, I, I eventually I'm going to have to talk about some of those consequences, some of those pains that I suffered. It might not have been like major the cons i've learned my consequence i don't god didn't make me wear my consequence i i i it was inside of me mm. it was it That's was weird. inside of me That's like weird. i was i was dark i was hurting even even with even still a light still caught all of those things but i am shedding the consequence now insecurity mm -hmm. trading insecurity for you know sexual trauma for for uh, discipline, because that's all it is, and that's that's why the devil. That's like the Adam and Eve sin to me. I would tell any young kid, keep your virginity, keep your virginity as long as you can keep on it and keep it and keep it and keep it. And I've said that from the moment I lost my virginity to the moment I was having the most fun having sex. It's it just it's like Pandora's box. It's the Adam and Eve fruit. Like, and that's why they're attacking this generation. They worried about LG. They attacking their whole sexuality. And y'all and parents stuck on one, one sexual sin, which just, I just watched something again that brought that back to me, which I've already knew. But what about all this heterosexual stuff that they're putting on the kids and all it is. And when, when, a when a young woman in a, what is this opening their worldview to? And like, as a church and as believers, we have to know that these things are normal. It's normal for a 14 or 15 year old to get horny and be attracted to a man a, as a girl. It's, it's these this is how God created us like but what are we gonna how are we gonna die right because we can't just say whoa 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 you gonna die but it's through I know I don't drink spirits because I don't like what them spirits do to me I get it this year there have been times where I got drunk and I don't remember anything that like for the first time in my life all that drinking we used to do in car I never once blacked out drunk after my accident was the first time like that I blacked out drunk, like woke up over a two year span, did not remember anything. That is the scariest feeling in the world to like, like when you actually sit and think about it, like to know, not even like I wasn't concerned about my safety in either situation. Like I knew I was safe, right? I would get home. Nobody was going to sexually violate me because of who I was with. but. I was having conversations, saying things I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Moving in it, it's fun in a moment, but it's like it was covering something. And I just rather rip the rug back and don't use spirits or we working on that, working on all things. Like I just pray addiction off our entire generation to not feel the need to lean back into substances or things of that nature, but lean into God and that pain starts to fall. Like I find myself chew, like it become a natural discipline habit that, oh, I'm sad. Let me not take a shot. Let me pray right quick. Let me cut some worship music on. I don't got to roll up. Let me do this. Like it, it become like a natural rhythm if you let it.
if we let it, if I let it. <laughs> I'm trying to find something now that you just touched on. We talking about drinking because basically Solomon, it say, all right, so Proverbs 33, Proverbs, I mean, th Proverbs 31. He says, let beer be for those who are perishing, mm -hmm. wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. No facts. I read that actually recently. That's funny, but that's facts. <laughs> they, they said liquor, wine is for the sad. So when I'm around a sad person, and they drinking wine, I'm not judging them. But when I'm around somebody that say they a born again believer and they got all this crazy faith and they got all these dreams and these goals and things that they want God to do and they're manifesting and you drunk every day, you sad, boo. That's what the Bible say. And even if they ain't sad, they putting themselves in a position to be sad mm -hmm. because it just said they wallow in their misery and their poverty. So basically you are distracting yourself because you aren't where you think you need to be. And it's people who drink. That's the argument, too. Because it's people who drink that they 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 got it going on or whatever. But you don't know just because they got it going on financially. Don't mean. Yeah. I'm what, like, what is what does got it going on even mean? Like they you know, got everybody girl, care about the, the bag now. Yeah, that's what I'm like. Okay, you got money in. Like, oh, with dating, that has just been such a thing. Like, I've grown a lot. I'm not as, you know, I'm working on balancing my feminine energy, but you know, it's, it's a tough cookie over here. It's a tough world over here, but I'm just like money. So what else do you have? That don't mean nothing. I, I don't attract broke because I'm not broke. Okay. Like, so, but what else do you have in our generation? It's like, they're treating money like a personality trait, money, like a, a, is very much pompous, is very much capitalist, is very much the very systems we say we want to divest from. Like, I agree. It's it's confusing. And that's why I'd be silent on our generation because they're they not going to like what I got to say right now. And no, I, I think a certain part of us will, but that's why I got to let God keep me in a dark room, right? Keep developing me. Because these are things I'm learning myself. Like, I'm not separate from this issue. I put myself at the forefront. I only can have revelation of these things because I've experienced them. Like, and more of us got to wake up because we wasting time. Thinking you doing something, but you're just wasting time. For real. Now, I hope I'm not saying this in a wrong way. This is me saying this. I'm not saying the Holy Ghost telling me to say this. But you look at Isaiah. Probably the between Isaiah and Elijah, they had the most powerful prophecies. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah, top three. Jeremiah. Sure. It don't never say that they was they were uh how can I say it that they were excused from what was going on. Exactly. They were in it too. So, which means we don't know what they did beforehand, if that makes sense. Because no, absolutely, they were they they were they were guilty too, because we human. There's no way to live without sin. Jesus was the only one. Yeah, it's that simple. And like, to be honest, like that's why Jesus. That's why we gotta like Jesus has to be the focus of this conversation of Christianity. Gee, that's why God made him the focus because it took away us being able to debate the prophets. You know what I'm saying? Which we shouldn't debate them anyway because they were humans. They are marvelous miracles of God that lived human lives that had transgressions and, and their own vices and own human fleshly desires. But then you had Jesus like, and they, I learned, but you, you learn more. You have to learn from both. I really like this is a new revelation, but I feel like the Old Testament is for breaking down those early old parts of you and the New Testament might be the instructions to keep going as a believer. Bring it up, bring you up. And that, that that's something that I feel right now strongly because the Old Testament breaks guilt and shame. And when you really are reading to like, to learn these people, learn the stories, like 
like like any other novel or book that you not novel but any other historical text that you would read read to understand like it's so important it, it's just it's so important and that that's powerful like they were a part of it nobody is excused except jesus period really? and like something that really got me because that really started to open up my my grieving process for real not performative not to which i mean you still being used because people got to know even when you got is going to use what he want to use if you say something out your mouth three people might be affected by it because god wanted them to five might but just like i just had a such a revelation moment when i realized like Jesus, like the most powerful scripture in the Bible to me in 2021 that I came across was Jesus with. <laughs> I knew it my whole life though. Like literally I've known it my whole life. Like my grandma, my mom's mom, who really was exposed to a lot throughout her life. She was a very strong woman and I'll just kind of leave it at that. But like every time we would pray or anything, she would just say, Jesus wept, Jesus wept. Like she wasn't a prayer warrior in my mind, right? And so as I'm getting older and you learn about people, like I could just remember Jesus wept, like we weren't allowed to say that for our memory verse and different things. And I'm like, why? That's the moment Jesus became the most human ever. That's that that moment, like, and that's what I'm saying. That was the, the, the garden of uh, G, I can't pronounce it. The Garden of G and that moment where Lazarus, that was Jesus' boy. That was his friend. They grew up together. That was his homeboy. Like, to, to see death, Jesus had not experienced that. Like, that's something very human. God does. God ain't experienced. God hadn't even experienced death until Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, losing somebody that, that I that came that like Adam no Adam came from the dirt Jesus came from God it's like a it's a whole different battle like you know understanding when you like really start to understand that and it's just like that's why the enemy coming for people in Jesus in Jesus but when I read Jesus wept I was like dang I probably can go ahead and cry too like and after that though I probably need to shed too this year might be ugly it might be sad. I wasn't suicidal though. I wasn't depressed, but I was very emotional. You get what I'm saying? Learning those points as well when you broke free from other chains. Like, but if Jesus wept, I can weep too. And that's for somebody too. Like that is so powerful. And then he got up to perform his greatest miracle, the resurrection. Right. God literally got up, brought his friend back to life and was like, let's get it. Like at this point, I, it was in that moment, he even understood all right, God, because Jesus was praying for another solution, asking his own father, like, I really got to die for real, dad? Like, you ain't going to send no ram and bush like you did back? No, like, that's powerful. Like, I don't know. I just thank, thank you, Jesus, okay? For the submission. For the, okay, for the OB, because Jesus didn't have to. Another Jesus could have fled. He could have been hidden. He could have. I mean, he can't. Leave, you can't leave, please uh, your daddy, but leave. I'm saying he could. He could have worldly fled, worldly principalities to, mm -hmm. to prolong his. But and that's what I'm saying. That's why he's so important because he literally is the example, time and time again, of how we should do this walk, time and time again. Yeah. Man, we've been like two hours. <laughs> Loki, it's good though. Jeez. Oh, they need to hear this talk. They need to hear the real talk. We we connecting with the people. People yeah. going somebody about to get saved from this episode because they're gonna understand that they don't wrestle, they wrestle against flesh, they don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Like you going I to, hope and if you're you not saved, all you gotta do is confess with your I'm mouth that you believe John 3 16. If you believe that Jesus rose and died for your sins and that he is the son of God, baby, you are promised eternal life. And eternal life, you can't never escape from my church hurt generation unless you go blasphemous and you do something so disrespectful and detainable. You got to know that that reckless love when you made that commitment at vacation Bible school or with your friend that one weekend or whatever you did, whenever you made that commitment, God, it was like you marked yourself and God was like, oh yeah, this one's mine and you still his, even in your confusion. 
we're still his. We're still his, even in our, our sin, even in our trauma, because that's the consequence of sin is death. But you can you can live an abundant life. And I want to say and still sin, because no, that's not OK. The goal, the ultimate goal is that God's love will transform you so that sin becomes detestable to you. But don't let the sin you're in now keep you from God. There were moments I was literally watching the word smoking, watching the but God was more pleased with me being there and that discipline starting than what I felt like the world or what other people. So he gonna meet you where you at, right in the middle of your sin. It's not a conversation about sin. All your sins are forgiven if you make that choice to say you believe in Jesus. So this is not a focus of sin, but a focus of life, literally. Sin is death, it equals death. This decision could be life. And so read John 3.16. Maybe some souls gonna be saved. Not maybe. I pray some souls be saved. Uh, souls yeah. gotta get saved. They gotta get saved. They gotta hear this and get saved. Make sure you check out Romans ten and nine too. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And you, you won't be saved. You won't. You won't be changed overnight. But you will know where you're going at least for one, and then you'll be able to be transformed. Let the Holy Ghost transform you. Like one thing is like with the whole sin thing, it's like it's all a a consequence. Like you know, if you if you go do something, like if you go rob a bank or something, or if you go like you steal something, if you go steal, like you're going to get a consequence for doing it. And you can go kill somebody right now. Like I can go to, I can come to Dallas and go on a rampage, like boom, 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 boom. Go to jail. Yeah, I went to jail. Yeah, I'm here. I might get the death penalty, but guess what? If I believe that Jesus died and raised from the dead, I'm going to heaven, but I'm still going to jail. <laughs> I'm still going to jail. I'm still going to re uh, reap these consequences. I'm still going to have the, uh, the jail meal. I'm not about to be in here eating uh, Roof Chris. They're not about to give me up. Yeah, and this is what people are not ready for. It's levels in heaven. This is why you got to get right here. Oh, no, for real. No. I, and it's something it's I reality. haven't even fully explored or researched, like not researched, taught, like studied up on. But I know I've heard messages preached like my grand. It's levels. Some people going to be sitting in gold houses and some people going to be sitting in gold apartments. Like Some people are going to be on the floor. Some people going to be at the VIP. And, and that is literally, and it's not like, I don't know, that's kind of weird. That's when I'd be like, God, okay, at the end, I, we just got to see it because you didn't leave too many answers. I mean, no revelation, but don't read revelation unless you, you locked in. Yeah, because they're going to be tripping. I don't even know why people don't believe in, I understand why people don't believe in God now, but I'm just clueless though, because people don't believe in God because they want to justify, they don't want to be accountable for what they- But the thing did. is, people, they'll say they don't, like, even if people say they don't believe in God, but you believe in the devil. How? They go hand in hand. God created the devil. He kicked them out of heaven. And another thing, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Our generation has to watch what we listen to as well, not just what we say. First of all, let's talk about it. They not capped out when they say, Travis Scott, Kanye West, that stuff be demonic. And anybody with a an ear for Christ, a real ear will be tuned in. And I'm not saying everybody is going to affect at different frequencies. Me, I've realized that stuff like that affects me at high frequencies because I was, I have an accountability. There are things God exposed me and me and my siblings to very young in the church that, that none of this is a surprise to me. So I've realized now that that's why my frequency may, or my discernment may, may be a little more in tune, but everybody else, you can't hide and run from it. You can't just keep acting like, and I'm not, it's, it's, it's not just those specific artists either. It's anything of this world is mammy. And you have to realize that you, like you're serving either one or the other. We, we're serving literally either one or the other every moment of our life. Like, and people don't know, like the devil created the, like he created the first sin, which was basically blasphemy. This is before Adam and Eve. When God, uh, earth wasn't even necessary. He just wanted to worship and, and look at and marvel at his creation. The devil, Lucifer, was the angel of music. 
of music. Say it again, of music, music, media, movies. All of that stemmed from music. Storytelling, the first movie was a song. Let's talk about it. That they would, you know, cultural things. So be very mindful. Like, for example, y'all know, if you know me, you know I love Brent Fias. I I love it. Like, love him. But I had to stop listening to him in this season. A lot of artists, though, because it was, his music is very much, a toxic dating type style that I'm trying to shed. So why am I hearing that or adhering to that? If I say I want to leave the street life and be more successful, I can't wake up every morning listening to music that influences me to go hit the street. Yeah. Like in, in movies, all media, just guard your... Guard your heart, of course, but guard your ears too and your eyes. Like, but ears a hundred percent. That's the that's the easiest way the devil is given to all generations. But ours, we make it. We we have all this knowledge. The Bible talks about us in Revelation. A generation that will have so much knowledge, be so wise, have access to so inform, so much information, but we will fall because we don't seek wisdom. And wisdom in the Bible comes from two sources: God and people that God appoints to be wise, which are that, to to send you wisdom. It's that simple. So God and people from God. That's it. The people of God. That's where wisdom comes from, and that's what we like. So that's why you got all this understanding of all of this worldly intellect with nothing to plug it into no source like i would say get wisdom and all you're getting make sure you get an understanding yes you in proverbs will tell you either you either you wise or you a fool there's really ain't no in between proverbs will read you like the fools that we are before we got saved proverbs will read you like what do you mean? Uh, what's the one? And the people are like, well, it's not things in the one. It's a book of the Bible. It start with an L. They cried the whole time. The whole time. It's like, big, yeah, let me, it's a big vent section, bro. Like I'll be reading. But when I was depressed, Lamentations made me feel seen. When I was going through anxiety, like different parts of the Bible made me feel seen. Like as a woman now, Ruth makes me feel seen in the Bible. Because so many people, I, and I hate that people focus, it's the only verse, book of the Bible named after a woman, shout out to Ruth. But it's like, no, Esther too, I think, or am I tripping? No, I think it is just Ruth, the only book in the Bible named after a woman. Um, and it's only four chapters. But Boaz, that's where that comes from. Like society has made this, this story of wealth, right? It wasn't about wealth. Nothing about money attracted Boaz to Ruth or attracted Ruth to Boaz. It was literally faith in the work of God. That is what that is a story of. And to work, and as women, I think it's very prominent. You have to work for what you want. Work. And I, even, I even think that simply this, he picked her because he seen that she was doing something that the rest of the girls that probably was after him wasn't doing. Yeah. They knew he was Boaz. Yeah. They, they all over there. Now he looked, he speak to her, she... Hi, how are you doing? Keep going. She don't even probably don't even know who he is. He, says he admired there. how she was working, how she stayed to ladies. You want to find your Boaz? That's what I'm on right now. I'm not looking, number one. And two, I'm gleaning the fields, my fields, my life, gleaning. That means cleaning, cleaning. I'm harvesting. I'm reaping. I'm sowing seasons to good soil. I'm not wasting my time with people that I know is no equal, it's no equal yoke. That's another Bible lesson. Like the Bible says you should be equally yoked with your spouse. Boaz and Ruth ended up to be equally yoked because Ruth had a work ethic that Boaz knew and could recognize because he was Boaz. I think he got all his riches. He was Boaz. <laughs> that is real though. And then I want I want to talk to somebody who might get discouraged because they feel like they they move, they doing that, but they still ain't found it. Ah. You don't want a uh, you don't want the false thing in the first place. Like the Bible say iron sharpen iron. Therefore, a friend sharpen another. I even like God hit me with this one day. I was discouraged down. I was, I'll be having all these business ideas and all this stuff. And I don't be having a lot. Like if I talk to certain people about it, it's like they blow it off or 
whatever. It was something that had happened. I don't know what happened, but God was like, if you claim to be iron, iron sharpen iron. So why would you want anything else to try to sharpen you? That's how you get dull. And that's, oh, that's good. That's what I had to learn. That's why now I run my plans by God. Don't get discouraged because, I mean, if you, I mean, and I think this is another thing too. This is a big thing that I think we all have to get used to. What if it's not in the will of God for you to be married? Actually, Sometimes, and that and it's not in the will of God for a lot. It's a part I have to, and you gonna a make lot. It, ain't the will of God. it might be in the will. be in the will of God for us to be rich. We might be poor our whole life. We might never get to see a manifestation of what we pray for, but somebody after us might get it. Exactly. And that's that faith right there. That's the no that's that that means boy to be never come traditional forward. curse breaker. That right there. That, that, life. The, the, that is a generational curse breaker, knowing that I might not live to see this. But our generation, when it comes to marriage, and I'm going to find it in the Bible, because when I read it, I was like, whoa, it was a prophet speaking to young women. In this specific text, he was like, I don't really know what to tell single women. God hasn't revealed that to me yet. This world is crazy. Be careful. And basically, married couples, y'all going to have to really fight for your marriage because this world is crazy. So I'm like, well, thanks, God. As a single woman, though, he protect yourself. Be like Ruth and glean in them fields. And if a Boaz is for you, a Boaz will come. Okay. And if not, like, you don't have to settle. You don't have to settle. But you can be married. That's what it also said. You, like, you don't... You don't have to stay single. That was the recommendation, though. Stay single. Because it's basically like, and he was, in my, the way I perceive it, and I'm going to find this. This is from the summer, so it's going to take me lots of scrolling, which you showing me I need a paper Bible. But, um, and I need to be highlighting in my big Bible. But get this one, get uh, this the MacArthur. You're going to be preaching, though. This is the MacArthur study Bible. You're going to be on Instagram preaching. Because this one right here got excerpts in here that, like, Talk like how we talking and tell you what's going on. Also, oh, yeah, took like a that. copy of the Message Bible. The I message like the, and the Amplify. I like Amplify and I like the New Living. I usually do KVJ, NLT, and Amplify, and I could figure out what is going on. It's like using those three, but I, I do that study Bible. I like how big it is. But I, I just. What was we talking about? Sorry. Telling them don't get discouraged because they don't, you don't want no dude that don't know his purpose anyway. Oh, facts. No, 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 no. I'm learning that, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> I used to always be like, you know, we talked about this before. Oh, Lamont, you remember that dude called me a trophy and I ate him alive. I ate him alive. I ate him alive. I did not like that. I didn't like the way that, the, like, and that's how I was. Like, and I look back like, dang. But some instances I look back like, no, I said exactly what I said. Don't. Don't don't diminish my value to an object on the shelf to to make you feel like more of a man. That's what a trophy is. That's a man with no purpose. I conquered you. I conquered. Well, I want to say a man with no purpose. It's just looking like the woman as if like I conquered this. I, I, yeah, or looking at the woman of looking at me like I have no purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's on the shelf. The be be here. LOL, do you not know the Bible says like a woman is who produces a, a house of love? Like it starts with the woman, like a virtuous woman, all my women. I can't tell you where it's at in the Bible. Proverbs 31. Uh, thank you. Proverbs 31 is my memory. But that your worth is far more than rubies. You got to know that. Men too, though. Uh, the virtuous woman text was not written for women. Found that out when I was, was reading a letter. it a few weeks ago. It was, it was for men. It was a letter. Yes. It was it was uh Bathsheba. Bathsheba Solomon's mother wrote that to him, telling him, and I'm assumed this is me speaking. I assume that she was just writing that letter to him to tell him, like, dude, you got 700 wives. What are you doing? Like, you need to pick and she like. <laughs> She, she was being a mom. Yeah. She explained to her son, this is what you want. Because you got all these women. You got money. They ruined the royal kingdom. They driving me crazy. And let's talk about Bathsheba and Solomon coming into the world in trauma. She teaching her son to be something that his dad wasn't. And who was his dad? David. A lot of people wouldn't know. Really kind of in a way sexually assaulted Bathsheba through power. We talk about it. Sexual assault is all throughout the Bible. 
That not and I and I won't say assault because that's not I never heard it interpreted. I that mean, way. it was an agreement, but I see what you're saying. She probably yielded to it just because. Yeah, it's like, called cohesion. What we would call cohesion nowadays. The you the think her cohesion is like when you're sexually assaulted. Like you ask me twenty times, I say yes to twentieth. Okay. She she went up there willingly though, but I know what you mean though. Willingly after her husband had died. No, no, oh, no, no, no. That's the wrong story. Oh. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm she, tweaking. She, I'm was tweaking. Starting she was starting it. She was starting. That wasn't the Sheba. Who was that? She was starting. No, that was. Oh, no, that's Jezebel. She was starting. You're right. They were. They were in lust. That's that's the Jezebel. Jezebel is. It was, was moving crookedly. That's what I mean. Yeah. Jezebel was the thought, but yeah. But she was. She just. She she went along with it. You feel me? She went along with it. She got pregnant, and then. He, he just, he slayed Uriah, so he won't have to, like, look bad. He slayed Uriah, so he would not have to take accountability for getting Bathsheba pregnant. And how many of us, Solomon, one of the greatest writers and storytellers in the Bible, came from the a broken man. home? He was the wisest. The wisest man. came from a broken home, though. The, the, like, epic. Like, my daddy... And my mama had an affair while my daddy was at war. Then my daddy felt, I mean, my mama husband. Then my daddy was like, oh, I'm the king. I can't do this. So he sent my stepdaddy to the front lines, got him killed, then married my mama. What? That sounds like our story. He was like, the like, black the sheep. He was like the black sheep low key because David had a whole bunch of children. Mm -hmm. One of his children tried to kill him. Yeah. One of his children tried to kill him because of he was about to get that kingdom to Solomon. Yeah, oh, this just hit my spirit. So David came, Solomon came from David, y'all. And David had a best friend named Jonathan. Make sure you got you a Jonathan. For no. sure. Like in 2022, I pray Jonathan's female, male, over everybody. And I say that because Jonathan was the son of King Saul, who wanted to kill, basically David was going to take King Saul's face. Saul didn't do what he was supposed to. And not that God didn't give him chances, though. So let's say, like, God gave chances. God gave Saul too many chances. He was sick of him, sitting, wasting space, wasting time, playing. So he sent David. Now I got this young buck that I'm finna raise up to do what needs to be done. And his son, though, was Jonathan. Jonathan and David were closer in age. They grew up as best friends. Because at first, when people don't know that you come to replace them, when they see your light, they love it. They, they see it shining. But as soon as they know, it changes. And jo Jonathan basically snitched on his own daddy and told David that my daddy going to try to kill you today, bro. Like, not try. He got to get up here. And at, time and time again, Jonathan was had this undevoted loyalty to David that and it for the Jonathans that, and it could be for those loyal to, like, for the people that feel like you don't got to be the friend on the stage. You don't got to be the friend. You don't got to be the, the sibling. You don't got to be the spouse. You don't, you don't got to be the person up there getting the glory. Maybe that's more so what I'm getting at. Like, you don't, you, but some people are literally your assignment may be to protect the David. So God can put out what he needs into this earth. But because of that, Jonathan and his entire bloodline, all the way to Mosheba Fib, like a story I just learned about who was handicapped and got pulled from a literally the city of despair to the king's table because what his dad had did. Like, so get you a Jonathan and be a Jonathan. That's the challenge to everybody this year. Get you a Jonathan and be a Jonathan. Like, that's good. That's, that's your really, neighbor. Like, I love know your neighbor. Know your you neighbor. Jonathan. Know your neighbor. And know your name. Another thing, guys. Sorry, we finna be done, but you gotta, you gotta, we all gotta start to research who we are, what our names mean, like, cause God puts certain certain people. This may be for it. It's not for everybody. And for example, like, um, I was born premature. I told you my parents didn't know each other. I was born, I was born premature. I was born US. three months. Three months. Yeah, I was. I was June twenty fourth. I was supposed to be born August seventeenth. Um. My mom had a placenta eruption when she had me. So like rushed to the hospital, like we literally almost died together. And that story as a kid, it didn't mean like, I'll be like, oh yeah, ride or die, LOL. Like, but as I got older, no, from the moment I came out the womb. There's a fight. The was, 
fighting. The enemy was trying to kill me, trying to take me out. So for my depressed babies, all my duh, duh, you're going to be experiencing things like that when the, the pressing of what you have to go through is deeper. Like depressed, it might be a deeper pressing in you. That I never said that like that. But just knowing like that. And I was born at 333. 333. That's a wartime. 333. That's that's three is the number of, like of completion in the body. For me, as in this phase, as I'm researching you know, who I am and why did God bring me here? I see, whoa, I was born premature at 333, survived death, God, period. Um, then my mom, honestly, I was born, I'm not sure my mom even had thought of a name for me or had thought like, because me and my sister were 16 months apart. So my mom was brand new mom, about to have another baby. This is not the, the same father, like not to put this business out there, but she, I, I know she was in a, a lot of people would have aborted me and she didn't. Let's just say that, like facts. Would have got rid of the evidence, but she didn't. Like, And so her and my grandfather, they always argue, Kristen, that's where that name came from. Anointed mm. one, follower of Christ. So you, we have to look back, even if the people who named us or the people who we came from maybe didn't provide everything that we think we needed or whatever, like you were named, you were sent, and you were delivered at a special time. What is it about? Like, what is it about? Me knowing I was born at three, I just ordered a necklace. That's powerful to me. 333. Like, that's God's kiss on my cheek every time I feel discouraged. Like, and I used to didn't want to say anything or like tell the story because I ain't want nobody like, oh, she thinks she know I'm not better than God just showing me I'm marked all throughout my life. And what area is he showing you that you ignore? It was big like that's big <laughs> that's big that's real because so many people they they coveting that's in the laws don't cover it don't cover your neighbor don't cover his belongings don't cover yeah. his spouse and i'm learning that and that's comparison coven comparison he same thing on wise my, my kids thing. comparison kills everything great everything the minute you start looking to the left and right, you've destroyed what's happening right in front of you. You just talking about joy earlier. Comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. always going to look at somebody else. The Bible say, he who compares himself is unwise. That's what Paul told him. Don't compare yourself. You're going to steal your own joy. You're going to make yourself unhappy. Can we talk one day? We're gonna talk about self-induced depression. But mm. man, I could do, I could I, when it just came from that accident, like I literally was diagnosed post-concussive syndrome. I have been, I felt I had dealt with depression before in my life, but after that accident, I I screamed positive on test at the doctor, like the felt like constantly like two three of them like could not pass it with time like this is something I know only God has healed me from and God took me to it so that I can get to this point of now like if I didn't have that accident I couldn't imagine how it would have been working about to be worldly promoted right like making six figures I'm 22 23 six figures about to be promoted then the world shut down I would have never been home I would have never been doing what I was supposed to be doing. I didn't have the discipline at the time to steward over nothing like that. So God sat me down so that I could become what he needed me to be for this season now. Really? Like, Hey, I think that's another thing. I think that the 2020 might've been a whole revelation to put the sons of God. I mean, I say sons as in the general term, yeah, yeah, put the sons of God in their places and make them understand who they are and, what they got to do and where they need to go to shift a generation that isn't put in straight turmoil because we going into a time of, of judgment and uncertainty and slowly but surely we are veering away from the will of God when we start to do our own thing. Like this is supposed to slow us down and it, it sped some some things and some people up like and pp ppp they way so okay <laughs> and let me say this with a lot of that 
You might not ever have the answer to the United States. Glory. But God going to ask. I mean, you, one day. If and you, what I mean by that is, and I'm not, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's not even judgy. I'm not saying this from a judgy standpoint, but did you steward correctly over okay. the resources that were given to you? That's that's real. I mean, the Bible say, I mean, I keep saying the Bible say the Bible, but the Bible, this is real. Yeah. Bible say. Uh, I love how every time I say something, it's like I, I speak not like that, but like it's like I've been like bringing up things. You know exactly where it is. Like I know it's in there. I just you you encourage me harder for sure. I was saying though, it say the plans of the uh, it say the plans of the righteous lead to profit. Surely as the plans of the hasty lead to poverty. So if you always hustling and you always trying to make a dollar, trying to make something happen, and living each day to make just make something happen, and you ain't got no plan, you are gonna be poor. That PPP season might have spoke a poverty, poverty, poverty season over your, your bloodline because you were hasty and not patient. That's for some. Mm. And the way to fix you, you got to go to God with how to fix it. How to fix. That's what I'm saying. Worldly things. And that's grace. You got to understand when you get away with something in the world, that's grace and mercy. But you never going to get away. You always going to have to you going to answer for what you did with God. You're going to answer. And it's not like answer in a roar way, but there's going to be consequences. And, and imagine, like, I just imagine at the end, like, what if God don't show us what, what if he actually don't be like, oh, the, the way we view the book of truth, what if it's not like that at all? What if we, it's a five, a 30 second video of everything we could have been if we would have not, you know, held our tongue in moments and all of those things, like everything I could have did in you, that's more scary to me than having to sit there and and that's regret. Like, I don't want to get there and regret anything, but them, them tacky words I used to say. This, this go for, for some men that's, that's out here, like, I was, you feel me, I was out here kicking it before, but like, Solomon has 700 wives, 300 concubines, right? And the reason why he lost, was a sex trafficker. He, <laughs> the no. reason why he lost the kingdom. The reason why he lost the kingdom, though, is because he let those women steer him away from God. Mm-hmm. And he didn't get the consequence. His son did. His son did. Yep. And what's crazy is the warning, the wisdom came from Bathsheba. Get rid of all of those wives. That's what the virtuous woman is about. Some of y'all men or when your mama be telling you, your mothers be giving you wisdom. They, they, they be instructing you on how, and look, the bloodline suffered because, and really Solomon was not, Solomon was not a sex trafficker. Let me not say that. Cause, but, and I don't even, you might have to cut that Lamont. Cause <laughs> we live in a very, like, and I, but no, for real, that is what it is, though. But you, it's just, I don't, and I just pray. That's why I say, Lord, let the, but I don't really, he wasn't a sex trafficker, but he was carrying a lot of sexual demons. Imagine that. Like 700. It's, but it's people that might listen to this that got hundreds of bodies. And yeah. I'm not saying that in a judgmental standpoint. It's, it's technically a wife because the Bible's way of, the Old Testament's way of talking about marriage was sex Mm -hmm. but a wife is is somebody you have sex with when they're a virgin a concubine is someone who can't be a wife because they already had sex so they might have went through trauma or anything that happened because it wasn't like it wasn't a thing for women to be promiscuous unless they was a prostitute they got paid to have sex so if they was a concubine it was because the king wanted them and he was like basically oh I need her. She has sex. No, it's a sex slave. And I say, you know what? I say not a sex trafficker, but because when we talk about slavery and I talk about Tawawa Springs and when I tell that story about how they had slaves as concubine, I say, nope, they were sex trafficked. So let's tell what it is. Like, but those were things that were normal at the time that now we live in a society where God is. And also that's why I say you have to read the Bible for historical Cause I'm not like Solomon that didn't make him a bad. That was something normal of the times that he just did to be extreme. So not a sex trafficker, but you get what I'm saying? Like women have always been mistreated and for people to be like, well, why, 
why would God allow God is not allowing that to happen? There's free choice going on with all 700 of those women. Oh, Solomon, free choice. He's a gentleman. So that just kills the antics of why bad things went on in the Bible because the world is evil. The minute that apple got bit into, it changed the whole trajectory of what this planet, that wasn't what God wanted. Mm -hmm. Period. What we live in is not what God wanted. It's not what, and it's something he did not experience fully until Jesus wept. He didn't understand like, oh, dang, it's hard for them out here to, to be with somebody. And then I just take them that like it, it gave an understanding. It created the Trinity after Jesus died. So then we have the Holy Spirit to go talk to God on our behalf, who in the Old Testament, he didn't want to hear what they had to say. It was, you watch, in the Bible, if you read it, you even watch God evolve. People don't even know something small as this. This is funny, though. This is just a little humor to it, though. The first person to ever jack off, he died instantly. Because he wasted his seed. And people, look, the church taught that as a, masturbation is a sin which i can't find that nowhere in the but i don't know but anyway it's the thoughts it's the thoughts it's exactly it's the thoughts that create increase the sin but he died instantly he didn't drop dead because he masturbated he dropped dead because he wasted seed at a time where god had ordered them to be fruitful and multiply so even stuff like that like that's why that's why you drop dead because i told you don't waste no seed and make sure every out of farm is going towards a kid potentially and you didn't listen so imagine you know, if we got the treatment of as soon as you do something bro imagine if we got old testament god we too soft he was walking i read the other day he said yeah i'm gonna send y'all on the path to the promised land but i'm not going with y'all because surely i will kill most of you <laughs> Man, it, it was like in the and in the wilderness, they was really tripping. They, was they had, bro, they had everything. Like, this is how awesome God is. Imagine being four years old when you came out of Egypt. 40 years come, you 44, but you got on the same clothes <laughs> you had on when you left. And people like back to some of the black liberation movements, left Egypt, Exodus. We were leaving something that was no longer good for our spirits. There was a group bold enough, which is us. We became as, I don't want to get into historical tree. But well, as African it's, it's a mixture. It's a mixture, though, because all of uh, all of Jacob's kids were, most of them, was, they was all like different, uh, different races. Ethnicities, yeah. Yeah, they was all different races. And they split. Yeah, and then even just the Bible also, it literally would demystify any other religions for you with time if you read it. I mean, Jesus, Jesus the only one to die. He, I don't know who else died. And then I'm like, Proverbs, okay, we get Japanese Proverbs. The Bible was first, so somebody copied somebody. Like, even if our generation is just go back and just as simple as that, like, the guy who is the most powerful in hip hop right now in the industry's name is like Lucifer. Very similar. What is this? Oh I'm, God. Hold on. I've been I've been out the way then. I... <laughs> it's who um wait a minute. His, his name sounds very similar. I'm just saying, just to just like it's no coincidence. But no, you really gotta you you are what you eat. I Somebody think. brought him up recently. Um, that's trying to get their music. Um, let me see, cause that's gonna be the only way I could probably refine this man name. Um, but I'm only looking for this because I I don't know. My spirit's telling me to the show like this stuff is so and nothing is new under the sun. I think the main thing about this whole conversation is understanding that. Your words got power. Mm -hmm. And you better know that you are what you eat. You are what you eat. And we're not talking about eating. We're talking about what you consume, what you hear. Yeah. To, because eventually it's going to turn. Oh, his name is Lucian, Sir Lucian Grange. Oh yeah, I'm I'm here to that person, but I didn't know that that was a person that was a head of anything. 
Yeah, I mean, no, he's like considered the most powerful person in the music industry. Mm. But not to give the world or culture that much credit, but it just, bro, stay alert, stay aware. We're in a spiritual warfare, 100%. Like, it's real. There's a there's an opponent, there's an opponent, and there's a, uh, what's the, what's the, you're not the opponent. Oh, there are two opponents. There's a defendant, not a defendant. There's somebody on offense and somebody on defense. There you go. Like, at all points, like, this is warfare. So make sure you prayed up. You gotta be prayed up. You need to. Fasting is the quickest way to get your prayers answered too. Man, I love to fast and I just don't, I, I don't fast food cause I don't eat a lot anyway. So in these recent, that's something God dealt with me on this recent year. Like I don't eat a, a fast for me would be forcing myself, right? Cause I'm like dealing with re getting healthy eating habits after some of the stuff that I've been through and just the, I, with the, concu- anyway, forget all of that. Nonetheless, I don't always fast food because food is not something that I have a dire need for. I fast social media. I fast people. I fast events. I fast substances. I fast spending money. I also will fast food. Like, don't mistake. Like, but when I do do that, it's typically like, a okay, for a whole week, we're not going to eat from 8 to 12. So I also would tell people to pray and ask God, what does a healthy fast look like for you? Because For me, where I was health wise, I don't think I could have done a healthy fast with, you know, and I won't even, excuse me. Oh, that's nasty. I won't even say that because that's not fully fake talk, but just know God will meet you where you are. It don't got to look like what everybody else look like. But the Daniel fast is a good one. If you can, first 21 days of the year, go in. Pray. Daniel fast, no, uh, no meat. You basically, you fruits, vegetables. And no seasoning either. No sugar. No sugar, no none of that. You just, you feel like raw. It's a raw diet, kind of. This is like just plain. No bread. You, yeah, you, dang. And you get you here. So somebody like myself that only weigh 100, <laughs> the Daniel fast might knock me out. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> no, but I, I'm actually I'm a uh I'm doing a variation of a diet like a fast diet this year this 21 days start the year 21 days prayer and fasting make sure y'all tap in with God because if you don't you might veer away that you didn't want to veer and, and ultimately you can get in a position where you don't become your best self yeah and that's like you don't want God to saw you that was a turning point for me right before kind of the accident, like marked. It was that's the series Mike Todd Transformation Church. But that did, like, don't go saw. I wrote that down. Like, I was gonna put that on T. Don't go saw, y'all. And you gotta listen to that and or just read that portion of the Bible to understand what that really means. But it also showed how how much grace and mercy. Like, I would have been been like, you know what, saw by like well, saw, saw doing what people doing right now. Facts. Exactly. Wasting time. They went, to, they went to the median. Don't be going no median. Get your palms red and exactly. And, and card, no, even playing with the stones and facts. candles. Chakras. When you got God, you don't gotta do none of that. When you in tune with the Lord, He gonna all of that. It happens on its own. And do I believe stuff like that is real? Absolutely. And that's why the Bible warns us against you things like that. Because you can't tap, you can tap into some spiritual stuff. But don't be surprised when your spirit is off after <laughs> tapping into a spirit not like God. Now you can't. Are you right though? Dude. That's good. That's real good. The, when you open the door for the devil. Hey, you gotta cut what I said about Solomon. My spirit telling me that. So cut that first part where I said that. Okay. <laughs> I got you. You don't got to cut all of it, but I, I don't know if I, I don't want people to think I'm making light because I'm not, I don't think stuff like that is funny. No, they, they, they understand. They, they, they better know that whatever they open the door for the devil, they, they can't control what come in. They need no, to. I'm talking it. about when I said he was a, a trafficker. Oh, a trafficker. Yeah. yeah. They, they understand. That was funny though. But this is God is my source podcast. I'm glad we had Kristen on, just opened it up a little bit more. Building a gap between God, money, business, family, and relationships, keeping it real, talking about the things that we go through in this life. Nothing is perfect. I'm not perfect. She not perfect. You not perfect. 
none of us is perfect, but we got the blood of Jesus to keep us in line. So appreciate y'all for logging on. We about to get up out of here because I know we was here for a minute. I know you probably got something to do. I so, actually don't today, but yes, blessings to y'all. May may the Lord be with you. If a life got changed today, um, make sure you you get in tune. I'm gonna tell you, go to Transformation Church, take save. This is a number you can Google, and I'm only saying that specifically because that's the resource I know off the top of my head. But if you get saved from this message, get you some resources because you think life finna get sleep, but baby, you just signed up for the fight of your life because now the enemy is warring for your seed. So thank God for all of the souls that are saved from this and those that are re regained and back on the on the winning team. Period. Stay in God. Keep God first. Trust in the Lord all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Don't be getting weary and well-doing, and don't be thinking that you got to make something happen to make something happen. Mm -hmm. He told us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things will be added unto us. He didn't say seek ye first money. He didn't say seek ye first a relationship. He didn't say seek ye first a job. He didn't say seek ye first a career. He didn't say seek ye first college. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And once you do that, you'll be put in his will. You'll learn how to utilize your words, learn how to utilize your thoughts. Mark 11, 23 say you can have whatever you say. It's according mm -hmm. to the will of God. So we just want to make sure y'all tap in. We keep it real. God is my source podcast. We logging out. Appreciate y'all for logging on. Miss Chris, anything else to say? You want to let them know where you can find you or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, you could follow me on Instagram at underscore cold with a K. K. I changed my IG name because teaching. Hold on. Let me pull it up. <laughs> they right. respond to you? No, I didn't want them to, though. My name was Kristen Deanna. That's my, uh, my name. So I changed it back to, I used to use this handle. Actually, it's kind of crazy that I use this handle because this was my handle that I used to be <laughs> reckless. Underscore, anyways, underscore Cold Kid Chrissy on Instagram, K, everything with a K, Cold Kid Chrissy, K-O-L-D-K-R-I-S-S-Y. No, Cold Kid Chrissy, y'all can spell everything with a K. He might put it on the screen or something. I'm sorry. I'll put it on the screen. Cold Kid Chrissy, the Cold Kid in the building. Yeah, I don't have a, a Twitter. A Twitter. Follow me on IG. Cold Kid Chrissy. Anything else, I probably won't accept y'all, but I love y'all. God love you. Appreciate you, Christian. We're going to log out. All right. Peace. First podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was awesome. Keep going. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together to just talking about everything that you have done for us and everything that you will do, Father God. We ask you to just touch the souls that are watching, Lord Jesus, Lord. Bring them to Christ, Lord Jesus, Lord. Bring their mindset to you, Father God. Bring their will to you, Father God. Help them to not search after anything else in this world before they seek you first and help them to understand that you will show them what they need to do with their time, energy, money, resources, and how to handle relationships. Father God, we just thank you for being our source. Thank you for keeping us rooted in you. And we ask you to continue to use this platform to reach souls, bring them back to Christ, and bring others to a better understanding of you, Father God. And we just thank you for everything you've done. In Jesus' name, I pray it is on the Shelby. Amen. Thank y'all for logging on to the God's My Source podcast. We bridge the gap between God, money, business, family, and relationships. We'll see y'all next time.